Hi, I'm Sarah Robinson and I'm the director for Hope for the Future and Hope for the Future are a climate organisation um, who works across the UK to support people to engage with their politicians on climate change. And I'm Jesse Hayes, I'm a digital strategist at Forward Action who are a digital mobilisation agency working with charities and other progressive causes. Um, we're going to be talking today about a project we worked on together to test the Britain Talks climate audience segment and messaging research. Um, so when we started the project, the Britain Talks climate research was newly developed um, and hadn't been tested in sort of a, a practical uh, way. Um, so we wanted to verify whether it was possible to use the messaging framework to acquire supporters for organisations um, in sort of specific target audience segments on digital channels. So we worked with two partner organisations, one of which was Hope for the Future, in order to test this approach um, and acquire new supporters for them in the process. So the approach we took to testing how useful and accurate this um, Britain Talks climate research was practically for climate organisations was to develop lots of different um, values based sign up pages, um, some of which you can see here, uh, and corresponding Facebook campaigns to promote those, um, all using the messaging framework to tailor them to different audience segments. Um, and we then uh, use the Facebook campaigns to promote those to a broad, um, non-segmented, not targeted audience. So for example, after clicking on one of these Facebook ads, which were developed to target disengaged traditionalists, um, and then signing up on this sign up page, which was developed to appeal to the same segment, um, users would then be asked to complete a survey, which verified whether they could be categorized as the intended segment. So disengaged traditionalist in this case. Um, so that's kind of a, a really, really quick outline of the work we did, but we'll get into a little bit more detail now as we discuss the specifics of the work and the results. Um, so Sarah, when you first started the project with Forward Action, what did you hope to get out of it? So I was really looking forward to learning more about the Britain Talks climate segments and how they could be put into action. Um, so I'd heard about the research and the results um, and was really excited to work on a project that would be making use of those findings. Um, and as a climate communications organisation, um, as Hope for the Future is, we are really interested in discovering the types of messaging that resonate with different people and um, so our target is usually politicians but we of course also consider the messaging that speaks to you know the everyday person and and the people that we're trying to support um, and particularly those who aren't already involved in the climate movement so it's a super practical learning opportunity then um, yeah so which audience segments from the britain talks climate research were you most um, kind of interested or in, intrigued in reaching um, and why? So we were um, tasked with selecting three of the segments to test uh, different types of messaging on. Um, so we met as a team, so the Hope for the Future and Forward Action team, and decided on uh, disengaged battlers, disengaged traditionalists and established liberals. And the established liberals group were a group that we felt we, we were probably already reaching um, so I suppose they were a sort of a warm group um, uh, although we do imagine that most of our audience are progressive activists um, but you know established liberals are, are probably fairly high up there um, and so as a group established liberals tend to feel politically empowered and optimistic for the future um, but do need to recognise the opportunity to leverage their community. So we were really keen to um, engage them further and, and as I say, see, see what messaging worked with them. So when we were developing the messaging, we used uh, things around doing our bit um, and using your voice um, and also tapping into European partners and, and messaging around that. And then the two disengaged groups they were more kind of aspirational audiences um, because we recognise that we probably aren't yet reaching people in those uh, two audience segments. Um, and as an organisation, we're here to help empower people to engage with the democratic system um, on climate change. So reaching disengaged groups is really important so that we can show them that they can have their voices heard and 
to support them in doing that. Um, and this is really important because obviously climate change affects everyone and everyone has to be part of the solution. Um, so we really need to be reaching disengaged audiences so that no one gets left behind. Yeah, and I think that was like one of the kind of broader findings of the Britain Talks climate research as well, wasn't it, is everybody does care about the climate. So even though they might sort of seem disengaged, there is a way to there is a way to reach those people um, and to yeah, get them involved, which, as you said, for hope for the future, um, super important to kind of champion those those yeah, less engaged voices. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know one of the first things that we did um, as part of this work was a creative session to come up with that kind of the messaging for those targeted sign up pages um, for yeah, the chosen segment. So what did you kind of find most valuable about doing that? Yeah, well, that whole session was just really interesting. And I think, first of all, it was great for the Hope for the Future team to learn a bit more about hand raises themselves and how they work, because it wasn't something that we had ever engaged with before or made use of before. Um, but perhaps more importantly, it was really interesting to learn more about the segments that we had chosen to work with um, and, and really get into their mindset and start thinking about how they might want to be communicated with so that you know the people who we were trying to engage what kind of messaging might work with them and what kind of messaging would resonate with them and um, so we thought about during the creative session we thought about each of the segments worldview and um, what their values are um, and also any red flags that they might have um, and this was obviously drawing on the the research uh, the Britain Talks climate research um, and using that to inform our discussions and and kind of building on that and developing that further so for example the disengaged battlers um, they characteristically feel disempowered and that sort of you know key part of their worldview um, but they value validation and respect and feeling heard um, and then their red flags would be false positivity and false promises. So it's really helpful to think about those things as we were developing the messaging to make sure, you know, we were avoiding any of the red flags and we were really using their values and, and speaking to those values. Um, and, you know, this is just generally really helpful for understanding how we might communicate with people. Um, and it's quite similar to our approach on engaging MPs and, and understanding their values. We had to kind of do the same thing with these groups and understand the, the barriers that they might be facing and, and the, the core values that they, they really hold. Yeah, absolutely. It's like you've got the research there, but it was almost like a practical sort of deep dive into, yeah, what makes them tick. Um, and even though, yeah, we're kind of all really familiar, familiar with the research, um, there was still a lot that was, I guess, surprising. Um, was that was that what you found like most challenging, like getting into kind of the headspace of those segments? Yeah, definitely. And I think it can be really challenging to, you know, really understand the mindset, particularly of someone who you might not necessarily um, agree with or share values with, um, but it was a really helpful um, exercise and I think it's important to get into that mindset so that you can begin to understand where the common ground might be and um, so you know between the each of the group's values and their worldviews and then the climate change <laughs> and action on climate change and where is that kind of link where's where's the bridge um, and and tapping into those things and, and using that to inform the messaging. Yeah, definitely. Like the more positive side of it, what what does everyone sort of agree on? Um, yeah, who are the common enemies? That kind of stuff, definitely. Um, so, kind of the obviously the outcome of that creative session then was the the nine different the nine different sign up pages that we created um, for our testing. So, um, like, what what did you think about those? Have you used something similar before? Um, no, we've we've never used um, anything like that before. So it was really really brilliant to see them come together and, and see, um, you know, see our kind of branding and, and the messaging that we'd worked on 
forward action really kind of brought that to life um, into these um, different uh, sign up pages. Um, and, you know, everything from the kind of copy that we used to the, the images that we used um, was all kind of, um, you know, it was all hope for the future, but adapted to, to really speak to these different audiences. So it was really fantastic to kind of see them in action, I suppose. Um, and, you know, we even worked with Ford Action on um, like A-B testing and things um, and changing through through the project. We, we tested, for example, the opt-in messaging to, to see if there were different ways of telling people to sign up that might work better. Um, so yeah, as a whole thing, as I say, we hadn't done anything like it before. And it was just really interesting to, to see it all live and there and, and see how it all worked and, and came together. So how, how did you kind of continue to engage um, those people? Because obviously, that's kind of the first step they, I mean, yeah, it was that was what we were doing, we were going to test the messaging, but essentially, they were signing up and, and they're subscribed to your email list. So um, yeah, how did you continue to engage them? And like, Kind of what kind of impact have they have they sort of helped you have since then yeah so we had uh, five and a half thousand people sign up to the you know our email list which was fantastic and kind of beyond anything that uh we we've ever had in, in our email lists before um, as a relatively new and small organization and um, so that that was brilliant and we uh worked on a welcome series to send to all of our new subscribers. So it was a series of three emails and um, kind of asking them to engage in in different ways. Um, and we we kindly had some support from forward action in that. Um, although it was kind of beyond the scope of the project, um, we did offer advice, which was really, really helpful. Um, and we encouraged signups to get in touch with their regional representative at Hope for the Future. And um, so that would be, you know, basically north or, or south. Um, and several of those people went on to receive training and support from our constituency support officers um, who, who were there to kind of provide that, that training and support. So that was fantastic. Um, we, we did find, though, that you know, with such a huge influx of email signups, we realised that we needed a better process to be kind of bringing people into our organisation and through our constituent journey process. Um, and this was just a really helpful kind of signpost and really helpful highlight because it led to us developing our open training sessions. Um, so we now hold monthly sessions open to anyone at lunchtime and in the evening, uh, which is kind of an hour long uh, taster of our training, um, which we can kind of channel people to go to. Um, so if we have inquiries, we can say, OK, you know, here's a, a training session that will be on next month. Um, so that that was a, a brilliant kind of development uh, within our constituent journey process. And we now have that to direct people to um, for any kind of future uh, programs or projects like this that we do. Um, and I suppose this project that we worked on with Forward Action, it, it was a pilot project. And um, as you've heard in my answers, we, we've never really done anything like it before. And um, so it was really helpful that it did identify this gap with funneling people into our process. Um, and we, we are planning to do some more work with forward action to streamline any welcome series that we put on and, and better integrate new people into our organization. Yeah, I I mean, I, I'd say like, you know, hope for the future is definitely not alone in sort of realizing that it's, um, it's, it's quite common um, that even when you manage to kind of crack that um, that sign up mechanism or that method of acquiring lots of people um, who are really bought into the cause is that it often then sort of highlights that like you said um, issues with how efficient that funnel is to getting people from yes I want to hear more from you to I'll 
do the big big thing that you want me to do which obviously in your case is sort of training and then meeting an MP so um, um so do you have final question <laughs> do you have um kind of what advice would you give to other organizations who are thinking about trying this either trying this approach out themselves um or kind of using the messaging framework in other ways or maybe just doing kind of one element of of what we spoke about today, Facebook ads, sign up pages, something like that. Um, yeah, any advice at all, really? Yeah, well, I, I would say that when thinking about communication and messaging, it's really important to put yourself in someone else's shoes and to consider where they're coming from. And um, so at Hope for the Future, we do this with MPs and then encourage constituents to do that with their MPs um, and to consider the, the barriers that MPs might face in, in um, taking action on climate change, whether that's lack of knowledge or external pressures or more immediate constituent concerns. Um, but I think it's the same when you are trying to engage particular audience segments. Um, so, you know, why, why might their worldview be different to yours? Uh, really digging down and identifying what their core values are and how you might speak to those values um, and, and show that climate change is, is relevant to anyone and, and relevant to, uh, to those per person's values. So I think that's really key in um, that you know the creative session at the start of the project really helped us to do that with these these audiences that we were trying to engage um, and in terms of kind of the facebook ads and 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 that side of of the work um i would recommend you know making use of experts if necessary um you know we would have been completely lost without forward action um uh, so yeah, we're just really grateful to the support that we received and are really looking forward to uh, working with you going forwards as well. Um, so yeah, so those are probably my two pieces of advice, you know, consider the people that you're trying to engage, really put yourselves in their shoes um, and also use expert advice when setting up Facebook ads um, and, and running a, a social ads campaign. Amazing. Um, and I'm not just saying that because you've recommended us. <laughs> it's just generally good advice. Um, great. Well, yeah, thank you so much, um, Sarah. I think, yeah, obviously your advice and kind of experience can be really um, valuable to others in the sector who are hoping to kind of do this project. Um, hopefully, yeah, people have learned a lot um, from hearing a little bit more about it. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you.